All right, good morning, good afternoon, whatever time it is for you to watch vlog number five, Disciples Who Make Disciples. Uh, we have uh, been working through our curriculum together. Hey, today we got, we got two special guests. We got two guys to help us understand this process of disciples making disciples. So Pastor Ben's here, Pastor Mike's here. Uh, we plan on having some of our own disciples come in and help us with this as we go through our podcasts. And we're excited to uh, look at kind of the second half of the second session of our curriculum. And it's all about making Christ central to our identity. Now we've got this chart in our, in our book. Um, it's a really fascinating chart to me. It talks about our conversion and then as, as we've encountered Christ, as we grow in our understanding of God's holiness and that increases, then our awareness of our sin begins to uh, become increasingly more. Mike's got it right here. I don't know if you can see it. But in between this divergence is the cross, is Christ. He becomes larger and larger in our lives, increasingly central to who we are. Now, there's a huge part of this, and so Pastor Mike's going to talk about how we can ensure that Christ is becoming more and more central in our lives. Mike? Well, one of the things that happens in this study is every week you have a reading plan that comes directly out of Scripture, and you can see... This is not my book. Mine's already filled out. But, oh, okay. uh, yeah. But uh, every week there's a, a section of scripture. Sometimes it's just a, a few verses. Sometimes it's multiple verses. But there'll be seven readings for you to do throughout the week. And they apply to the study that you're going to be doing that week. Uh, this week has, uh, it just goes straight through several chapters of Mark. And you hear things from Jesus talking about the kingdom of God and what that means. And and it's neat to go through it that way, to go in order like that, because you can see passages of Scripture in context. Uh, oftentimes you'll take a verse like, uh, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength, and you use that to motivate yourself, but you don't understand uh, where that comes from that's coming out of the fact that Paul was talking about he suffers, and, and in his suffering God said, my grace is sufficient for you, and, and so that Paul has settled in his heart and become content that Christ, as he makes Christ central in his life, Christ is going to work through his life to help him accomplish what God desires for Paul to accomplish. And so it helps us to read passages like this in a row so we can get the context of where certain verses are coming out of. Who was Jesus talking to or who was God talking to or who were the prophets talking to? Uh, what was the historical context, it still applies to us today. Uh, God's Word is still important. And so it really focuses us as we start our discussion with a biblical foundation for all the questions that we're going to engage throughout the week. So it's really important to spend good time uh, focusing on the reading plan, writing out your thoughts as you read the verses. And the groups that I'm in, we spend probably close to 30 minutes of our meeting time just talking about these verses, how they've impacted them, what, what they saw there that they'd never seen before. So it's a really important aspect of building that strong foundation for the rest of the study. So I, I think what Mike is saying is, obviously, as we spend time in Scripture, we, we are going to encounter Christ. He's going to challenge us about what's central to our identity. And we're going to spend a lot of time today talking about those things. What challenges us for the centrality of our hearts, for who we are, our identity. And that's what we find in this chart that we talked about. And that's what we find when we read Scripture, is that there's this conviction uh, that we ought to be making Christ more central. And in our book, um, the authors have this statement. I want to read it to you. It says, as a person's view of the cross grows, this naturally results in attributes like thankfulness, gratitude, love, mercy, justice, etc. The Christian's character is being transformed into the image of Jesus. Now, this last sentence I think is critical. It says the key, this is key in how Jesus becomes increasingly central in the Christian's thinking, feeling, and acting. So this is a reasonable faith. This is a reasonable expectation for the Christian to become 
more and more like Jesus in the way we think, feel, and act. It is a practical application of who we are in Christ. And so there's a question here. I'm going to let Ben uh, give us some commentary and some thoughts on how he responded to this question. The question is, in the time that you've understood what Jesus has done for you on the cross and giving your life to him in a response, how have you seen Jesus become more in, or become increasingly central in your life? So Ben, just share a little bit from your own life and how you've understood what Christ has done for you and how that has increased his centrality in your thinking, acting, and feeling. All right, so uh, talk a little bit about my testimony here. Um, you know, I, I think about it, saved at the age of seven. I go through grade school, high school, and I think about living uh, really for myself there, knowing who Christ was, but he's working on my life. And then I get into college and kind of still pursuing what I thought I should be doing. Um, and then I get a career. And that's, uh, that's for me where my life began to change. Um, understanding who he was, uh, having a desire then to serve him. Uh, felt like I was kind of wasting my life. Had pursued this, uh, this plan for myself and things weren't going well. So he, he, he started to say, you know, you've got to bring me into your life uh, if you're going to make it through. And uh, so I had a desire to, to serve him, and I, I went to the church just seeking uh, where could I serve in the church. And uh, easy for me was youth. And, and as I got into that, you know, he just called me further and further, um, where instead of just giving him the time I was at church, now I wanted to give him some of my life outside of church. And we fast forward all the way to, uh, to me becoming a pastor here and... Uh, my relationships, my friends. Um, I, I, want to, uh, I want to have relationships with them that, that builds them in Christ, that leads them to Christ, that uh, in the process builds me in Christ, grows me. Um, and even, even my free time of my hobbies, now I have a desire to, to use those. I, I don't want that to be a selfish thing, but I could use that to, uh, to grow someone else in Christ. And, uh, you know, as, as you live with Him, uh, part of my story is he didn't let go. He, he, uh, he was faithful to me in the years I wasn't faithful to him. And, uh, you know, as I grew and he kept working on me, uh, I just seen my heart change and my desire to follow him grow. And, uh, and it has led me really here to Artesia. Uh, I've decided, to, you know, to turn over more and more of my life. And it's exciting how that's happened. Our identity begins to change. It goes from who we thought we were or that process of searching for who we are and we discover that Christ becomes our identity. Now we're going to talk more and more about that. You'll recall if you watched our last uh, blog, uh, our, our last podcast, that uh, we talked a little bit about Zacchaeus, this individual who encounters Jesus and immediately makes a change of who he is, an identity change. Uh, and so we... We find that, that's in Luke chapter 19, that we find the story of Zacchaeus. And there's this moment when Jesus speaks to him and his heart changes. He becomes a new person. And so we want to talk about that. We look at these examples from Scripture, and I think sometimes we, uh, we set them kind of on a pedestal like, oh, that's in Scripture, and that, and that doesn't really happen. But it does happen, as Ben was just talking about in his own life. And we want it to be practical and how we can see this happen. So what our curriculum has done, and what we've all done through studying this, is we've evaluated just kind of these scenarios, these case studies of people who sometimes put their identity in certain aspects of this life. And then we ask the question, what would it take for them to make Christ central? So the first kind of case study, and we're all going to take a turn talking about these. Let's imagine someone, and this could be you or uh, those of you watching, it could be probably a form of, of all three of us, this first case study. Someone who grew up in a very strict, morally conservative family. And in their mind, they think, I am a good person. So, that, there's nothing wrong necessarily with that. But if we want to make Christ central, and this is our thinking, I'm a good person because of the family I grew up in, there has to be a change of identity when it comes to Christ. So the question is asked, what is this person making central to their identity based on this kind of scenario? So Mike, um, as you understand this scenario, 
What are they making central to their identity? They're, they're making central their own ability to act in a moral way. It's, it's about what they can do. And, and oftentimes when, when people are, are feeling that good about themselves, it's because they're comparing themselves to other people. Yeah. When, you make your, when you make Christ central to your life and you begin to compare your life to His life, when you begin to compare your life to his teachings, you begin to see just how reprehensible you can be as a human being. And uh, I find that even in my life, when, when I'm not making Christ central and I'm comparing myself to other people, I can start to feel good about myself and it really develops into a sin of pride yep. in my life. But if I'm focused on Christ and, and what Christ desires, I see my flaws. They're, they're very clear. They're ever-present. Like Paul said, I'm the chief among sinners yeah. when I compare myself to Christ. And it gives me uh, gratitude that Christ forgives me of my sin, but it also makes me aware of things that, that I need to clean up in my own personal life. That's that divergence, right? God's holiness, my sinfulness, the, Christ, the cross, Christ gets bigger and bigger in my life. And so an individual who grows up in this kind of scenario... Sometimes they have a false sense of, of who they are, uh, thinking they're good enough because of the way they were raised. But we, as we've learned through our, our uh, podcasts, only Christ is good. And yet he gives us righteousness. He, he passes on to us holiness. And then we, then we grow in that through making better decisions about the way we feel, about the way we think, about the way we act. So this case study... Very familiar for lots of people who grew up in the church. And I'm a good person because I went to church. And we put our identity in some act, or even in this case maybe, in some, um, something even outside of ourselves, our family. Because they're morally uh, conservative than I'm good enough. Case study number two. Um, think about this one. And this one's more difficult. And this one can be very personal for, for people. This case study says someone who was abused as a child... And they grow up thinking that they're worthless, that they're dirty. What would it look like for this person to make Jesus central to their identity? Ben, how, how did you respond when you went through this scenario with your disciples? What did you guys discuss? You know, uh, thinking about what Jesus can do and how he can make us new. Uh, it brought me to, uh, to 2 Corinthians 5.17. Yeah. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new mm -hmm. creation. The old has passed away, and behold, the new has come. And, uh, and so that's what we talked about. You know, that, that person uh, can have Jesus in their life, can feel that, uh, that newness that he brings. Uh, that identity that I can live from this point forward, being that new person. My past does not define me, huh? but Jesus does. And so they can live in that. What, what a hard situation, a hard thing to talk into. But, you know, only Jesus can... can uh, can be what they need in their lives. The old has passed away. The new has come. My past does not define me. Right. So as humans, men today, we find all kinds of ways to define us. It starts at a, at a young age. And we were talking about this before we started filming. Ben said with student ministry, it's, it's at that adolescent time that kids start saying, who am I? And that kind of leads us to this third case study. And this one also is one of those uh, difficult conversations for many Christians. It's one of those very um, sensitive conversations in our world today. Listen to this third case study. It says, someone wrestling with both the gospel, what Ben is talking about, being made new through Christ, and their sexuality, trying to define who they are in terms of their sexuality. What would it look like for this person to make Jesus central to their identity? So that's a, a powerful question for young people. But we also know in society today, this is an incredible conversation that's occurring all the time. Who am I in terms of my sexuality? How do I identify? And we're talking, there is no um, aspect of identity outside of this conversation. There's no taboo conversation. There's no uh, identity that says, well, we're not going to discuss that in Christianity. Every identity 
has to come into alignment with Christ. And we find that right here. There's lots of confusion about sexuality and how I define myself. But we're suggesting that it is possible, and we're working towards that, to make Christ our identity central to everything we do. Touch on that a little bit, Mike. Well, and I, I think about sexuality is just one aspect. You see in our world today where people are trying to make sexuality even a, a race. Yeah. A, a, and, and Subgroup or, uh, or even sure, a larger. Sure. And they, it, that, they use that as their identity. Uh, uh, people and what they do for a living is their identity. Yep. But uh, if we're going to be uh, true to Scripture, our identity is as someone created by God the Father, made for a purpose, made to have relationship with Him. He, he showed us throughout Scripture, He's shown us, both old and new, things that aren't pleasing to Him, that cause broken relationship with Him, that He wants us to get rid of, the way that we get rid of that is to identify with Christ. The Bible says, He who, who knew no sin became sin so that we might become His righteousness. Jesus came and took our sin on Himself. And when God looks as, at us when we identify in Christ, He sees Jesus. But if we don't identify in Christ, if we don't have a relationship with Him, all God sees is our sin. And as a holy God, God is going to deal with that sin. But people are using all sorts of things for their identity, uh, apart from God, apart from Christ. And, uh, and we're trying to help people make Christ central, see that He is their identity. When people ask me, what, who am I? What am I about? My identity is, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christ follower. Uh, this is what I do for a living. Uh, this is this is relationship I have with my wife, but my identity is a follower of Christ, and that's placing Him central in my life. So, so what you're saying is we can we can search for identity in all types of places. Right. Right. So Zacchaeus, his identity was in his power and authority, and in his wealth. We talked about that in the last um, the last podcast. Uh, the rich young ruler, we talked about him from Scripture. His identity was in his ability to keep the law, his self-righteousness. Jesus, in both of those scenarios, he says, your identity is placed in the wrong place. And you've got to change to be a follower of mine, to be a disciple of mine. Our identity can be in our athletic abilities. I, I remember a testimony from a young man who grew up right here in First Baptist who went off and had great success athletically and he discovered somewhere along the way I'm not just an athlete I actually I'm more than that I'm a Christ follower a disciple of Christ and his identity shifted from athletic ability and our identity can be placed in anything that becomes um, a hindrance to our relationship with God and that that can be anything and so we see that in this final case study I'm going to turn the page for us we're going to kind of wrap things up here um, there are certain things that we encounter in this life that we become aware of as Christ followers that are competing with Jesus to be central in our hearts. Uh, for pastors, it can be arrogance. It can be pride. Uh, we read the scripture and, and we know scripture. and We can quote scripture and we have all the answers. At least that's what it seems like. And we let pride and arrogance puff us up. Mike talked about that just a uh, oh, oh, just earlier today. Uh, we can also have insecurities. I've got to fake it. People are counting on me, and I really don't know what I'm doing, but, but i got to be this face, and I've got these secret insecurities. Uh, there's things that compete with Jesus. He has defined us. He has told us who we are. He has said, the old is gone. He has said, I give you my righteousness. He gets to define us. We don't need to let other aspects of life compete for Jesus to be central. And there are symptoms that something is competing. And that's one of the questions here in the book. I'm going to ask Ben to give us just an example of something that comes up that is a symptom that something besides Jesus is central. 
in our decision making, our acting, our feeling, uh, the way we think? Uh, you know, I would, I would just say um, symptoms would be just struggling to follow him um, in, in whatever aspect it might be. Uh, instead, of, instead of the Bible, I go to that first, I go to this first to make me happy. Um, what's receiving a lot of my time? Um, uh, do I have a, a lot of fear and anxiety that's just out of control? Yeah, especially right now, it's, it's very timely, fear and anxiety that's out of control. Not responsible, not uh, reasonable, but out of control. Uh, symptoms, right? Am I feeling anxious beyond a reasonable place? Uh, these are symptoms that something is competing with Jesus being central in my life. And there's something really unique from Scripture. Mike's going to share a little bit from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Something that will mislead us, something that we've got to really evaluate. Share with us a little bit of Mike about a symptom that, that can overwhelm us and compete with Jesus being central in our lives. Well, the passage is, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make your paths straight, or He will direct your paths. And, and now I'm, I've been in the church for 50 years. I have been in ministry over 30 years. I've been at this church for five years. And one of the things that I struggle with personally is because of my experience, because I've done a lot of different things in ministry, because I grew up uh, always learning about God, uh, I can depend on my own skill set. Uh, I have a good education, I've got a lot of experience, and sometimes I can sit in my office and I can go a week and make everything happen without ever engaging God's will. I can do my job without God's intervention. And that scares me because I want to rely on God, I want to seek God, I want God to be directing the path of my ministry. And so I have to take a step back and be careful that because uh, I'm skilled, that I'm not leaving God out of the equation and doing everything in my own strength. That's where I'm going to have difficulties. That's where I will have criticism. If I pray and I feel the Spirit leading me to do something, uh, and somebody criticizes me, then I can say, God led me to do that, and I trust Him fully in this, and I'm asking you to trust also. But if they come to me and criticize, and I can't say that I prayed about it, or I can't say that, that God was leading me to do it, that I just came up with it on my own, then, then, then I'm open for that criticism. And so it really is a challenge, but an encouragement to me, weekly, daily, to, to seek God first, place my trust in Him, acknowledge Him in everything I'm doing, not just on Sundays or Wednesdays, but acknowledge God at home in my family relationships. Acknowledge God at work in the workplace. Acknowledge God in Walmart when you're standing in line. Uh, in everything that I do, remember that I'm His child and I'm His representative. And, and trust Him to help me make decisions and, and treat people the way He wants me to treat them. Uh, but it's very difficult for people who are skilled to, to call out to God first. They, they think that they can hand, they almost say, God, I've got this. I'll call you when I've got something big that I need to deal with. And that's a very dangerous place to be. That's a red flag that we're letting something else, in this case, our own understanding or our experiences, that they're competing with Jesus being central. Um, and we do that in relationships. I rely on my own understanding or I rely on some self-help book or uh, somebody else's. Uh, interpretation of how a relationship should work. We do that in our finances. Right? We, we, we look to the kind of the worldly model of how to handle our finances. And, um, we, we can do that with our time and our schedule. Ben mentioned that and, and how where we spend our time can really be a, a symptom of whether or not Jesus is being central in our lives. Uh, is all my time spent on me, <laughs> what I want, what I desire? Uh, is all my time spent on worthless I have worthless. It's a spin on things that are not as good, not as valuable as what I could be spending my time on. You can you can even take it to our relationships with our wives uh, and our sexual relationships. 
Uh, how, how am I allowing Jesus to be central even in that area of my life? The scripture says, think about him in all of your ways. Right? Mike talked about that. So I encourage you, uh, we encourage you, we're encouraging each other to make Jesus central in our lives. We encourage you to do the same. Uh, we're going to wrap up this um, session, this podcast. Uh, I want to introduce to you the, the coming podcast, session three of our curriculum, Time with Jesus. Time, uh, how important it is that we just invest our time, that we might see Christ moving and acting, that we might be obedient to his call. We were created to know God in a deep and personal way. Let that just soften your heart today and let that just reflect on that idea that we were created to know God in a deep and personal way. Hey, thanks for tuning in. I uh, look forward to the next podcast coming up uh, in, in the near future. You guys, say goodbye. Goodbye. See ya. Goodbye.